Hey, welcome to What a Feminist Looks Like, a channel where I talk about the relationship between fashion and feminism, starting from the 1830s to the modern day. Now I'm going to discuss the bloomer. What the hell is the bloomer? Alright, so it's a pant that women wore to shorten their skirt. This bloomer was part of the larger dress reform movement, and it was showcased first at the Seneca Falls Convention by two ladies named Elizabeth Cady Stanton, who was a major suffragist, and her cousin Elizabeth Smith Miller. From there, the bloomer was publicized by Amelia Bloomer, who was then named after, and in her journal it's called The Lily. The Seneca Falls Convention occurred in July 1848 and was the first convention on women's rights. It was also the time period when the dress reform movement had its start. The bloomer outfit from head to toe consisted of a jacket, a high collared shirt, a skirt that was mid-calf to knee in length, and then bloomers underneath that skirt. The skirt and bloomers were full and billowed out, kind of, so they weren't that form-fitting in any way except for the ankle. Bloomers in particular billowed out from the legs and were cinched at the waist and ankle. I used sweatpants to substitute for my bloomers since real ones were kind of expensive and unavailable to me. For the hair, I put it in a simple bun. During this time period, women wore their hair back, parted in the middle, and away from the face. Shoes in the bloomer outfit were slipper-like, so I used toms instead of actual slippers since I don't own any. <laughs> and I don't really think neon or bright purple ones would match it. <laughs> and this is what the bloomer outfit looked like without a jacket. The shirt was long sleeved and high collared, with the waist cinched. The bloomer outfit itself was the first introduction of women being able to wear pants. This was what got the ball rolling for women to eventually wear pants on their own, even though it was many, many years later. The controversy of women wearing pants is what kind of ended the bloomer costume being in fashion, which was about 1855. It died out because of massive criticism women who wore these outfits endured from the public. Karen Creeble, in her dissertation, recounts that some of these different criticisms were that women who wore bloomers were a strength from tradition, for male approval, they were symbolizing everything that was wrong with feminism, and that they were trying to be their own which obviously is such a horrible thing to do. Women going on their own, trying to be functional members of society. Oh dear, what are they gonna do next, vote? Fret not, this was not the end of the bloomer though. It was revived in around the early 1890s because of the bicycle. As you know, on a bicycle, you have to have your legs separated so that you can pedal. This led to women having to have something called a bicycle suit, but within the bicycle suit were, were bloomers. Linda Scott, in her book Fresh Lipstick, recounts that this adoption of the bicycle by women was a huge step in feminism because it allowed women to have mobility because women weren't allowed to drive, but also because it, it, made, it forced there to be socially acceptable changes in women's dress. And with that, we are done with the bloomer! I think that you should give this video a thumbs up. Let me know what you thought in the comments below. And subscribe to this channel if you want to learn more. For context into the broader time period and movement that the bloomer was associated with, I suggest that you see my previous video called Equality Through Clothing? Question mark. That's on the dress reform movement. My next video should be on corsets, which is also in the dress reform movement and related to bloomers. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Bronwyn, and this is what a feminist looks like.